Discovery, returning to the space station taken away from future missions. Antimatter, the fuel of choice for various sci-fi movies, one of which is Avatar. In Avatar, they use antimatter to reach the distant moon of Pandora in the solar system of Alpha Centauri at an incredible speed of about a billion kilometers per hour. But what exactly is antimatter? Antimatter is created when a gamma ray hits an atom, and this creates two particles. One, an electron, or matter, and the other one, a positron, or antimatter. One of the ways to get antimatter is to use particle accelerators, like the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland. Here, they collide particles at near the speed of light, and this, among other things, creates antimatter. Another way to get antimatter is to capture it in planetary magnetic fields. For example, those of Saturn or Jupiter, which contain large quantities of the stuff. But also our Earth contains antimatter, just waiting to be used. But why bother with antimatter? Antimatter contains a lot of energy. One kilogram contains about the equivalent of a volcanic eruption. Due to its high energy density, antimatter spacecraft can be very lightweight, since there's no need for a big fuel tank. Antimatter is also the only means of propulsion which will allow us to travel to stars. Traveling at about 40% of the speed of light, this will allow us to reach nearby stars in about 10 to 20 years. How does antimatter propulsion work? There are multiple ways. One of them uses a big sill coated with uranium. By firing antiprotons at the skin, fission reactions occur and this generates thrust. Another way is to annihilate protons and antiprotons, and then using the result to directly power the spacecraft. This allows it to reach 40% of the speed of light. For missions to Mars and other planets, a fission fusion system can be used. This uses a lot less antimatter and can provide an economical and realistic manned Mars mission. But not only spacecraft can be fueled by antimatter, also aircraft. Using antimatter engines, it will be possible to fly from London to Sydney in about one and a half hours in a suborbital flight. Under these conditions, drag will be minimalized, allowing for more efficient and more economical flights. Since antimatter does not produce any pollution, aviation will become carbon neutral, saving about 650 million tons of carbon dioxide a year. Also, the weight of the aircraft can be reduced by more than half, since only milligrams of antimatter are required to fly. Refueling would only need to happen once every few weeks instead of after every flight, which saves a lot of ground time. In conclusion, antimatter will be the fuel of the future. It has unlimited possibilities and allows mankind to reach for the stars.